Here, of course, there's only one line because there is no additional aesthetic for Geom Smooth. Okay, so that's that's what that is. Okay, this is again something not a particularly useful technique, but I just want to give you things to challenge yourself. Okay, so here what you're seeing is that this is a scatter plot. The points are somewhat big and each point is colored depending upon drive. So all of this is fine. You can do that now. But what you're also seeing is that there's a sort of white border around each point. Okay, so just, of course, this is not something that I have taught you how to do. Use your creativity and think about how you might achieve this. Again, pause the video and come back and see how this can be done. It's just a nice uh, little bit of a puzzle, so to say, for you to uh, exercise your ggplot muscles. Okay, so I assume you have paused the video and suggested some sort of an answer to this and you're ready to look at the so-called official answer. So the point here is that uh, the way in which I've achieved this result of a white background for each point is essentially I plotted the GG, uh, geom point layer twice. You can do that. Nobody says you can't have the same layer twice. So I plotted the geom point layer twice. And the first time I plotted it with a fixed color of white. Fixed color of white and somewhat bigger than normal. Okay, so the first layer is going to be a bunch of big white points. And then the second layer is the colored points which are slightly smaller, right? So that's what happened here. Okay, so that's the first layer. Color equals white. It's not, it's not mapped to any aesthetic. Notice that color is outside of any aesthetic. So it's a fixed color of white. Size equals four, right? I wanted it slightly bigger. So that is what is generating those white circles, right? So in fact, if I had plotted only this much, you would have seen all white points. Okay, but I'm adding another layer of points. This time I'm saying color equals drive size is two, size, size is smaller now, right? So exactly at those very same points, you're going to plot all these colored points. Okay, so that's what is going, that is what is causing the graph to get this sort of appearance. Okay, now think a little bit about what would have happened if we had interchanged the positions of the two layers, right? If I had put geom point mapping this one first and then set geom point color equals white. Think about what would have happened. Okay, so in that case, what would have happened is that the smaller colored points would have been plotted first and then the white layer would have come afterwards and it would have overlaid each of those points. So we would have seen only the white points because that is being plotted later. It will overplot the earlier layer. Okay, so that is why I put the white layer first and then put the colored layer later. Okay, so that was the point. What if we change the order of the two layers? That's what would happen. Okay, so now let's revisit facets for a little bit. So we saw that we can use faceting to take a larger plot and divide it into smaller subplots based on the value of some particular variable. Okay, this is really useful technique. Uh, to see if the uh, scatter plot or any plot differs significantly based on the values of some particular variables. Okay. Now, at this point, I would just like to reinforce one very important idea that a lot of data analysis is really about analyzing the variations in data. Right. That is, you want to see what are the things that differ depending upon certain characteristics. Right? So remember, even in linear regression, that's what you did. You looked at why is it that uh, the, the line is at different points or why are these points differing in their dependent variable value? And you want to find the reason for that. Right. So there is a variation in the value of the dependent variable. So, for example, if you're looking at housing data, well, the housing prices are different. Not all the houses have the same price. Right. And what you really want to do is to see that the housing prices are varied and provide an explanation for why that variation is happening. Okay, so same thing with facets, right? You want to see, is there a difference in how the scatter plot looks for classes, uh, cars of different classes? 
Okay, so that's very important analyzing variation. And if you remember, we did this plot. Okay, so we got one smooth line, right? Geom point, geom smooth. So all the points, all the smooth things. But the same thing, the moment we added a facet wrap, okay, what really happened was that the same uh, two layers were now divided into multiple plots depending upon the class of the vehicle. So we got one plot per class of the vehicle, right? So you've got a plot for two seaters, you've got another plot for compacts and so on and so on and so on. Okay, so we can now examine is the relationship between uh, uh, displacement and highway mileage significantly different for cars of different class. Okay, so that's what you can explore. In this case, it doesn't look like there is all that much of a difference. If you especially look at the layers where there are significant numbers of points, it doesn't look like there's anything dramatically different that's really going on, except that maybe compact cars are up here somewhat different, but the other others look quite the same. Okay, so this was the idea of facet. The whole point is that when we did the facet wrap, both of the layers got faceted. The smooth layer and the point layer both got faceted. Okay, so in general, when you do facets, facet wrap or facet grid, you will affect all the layers. Okay, now recall this plot. Okay, we did this plot. This is the same as the previous plot, except that it doesn't have the geom smooth layer. And the code was this, right? We said, GG plot, X and Y mapping. This is a geom point, so scatter plot. So this would have generated a scatter plot of the entire data. And then we say, oh, by the way, generated in facets. Give me a different plot for each class and you get this. Okay, this is identical to the previous slide, except that there's no smooth line, that's all. Okay, now what we would like to do is the following. Okay, uh, let me say this. So in order for us to be able to compare the different plots, wouldn't it be nice if we could show the entire set of data on all the plots, okay, just to get a good idea of where each subset is falling in the context of the overall data, right? So remember, context is very important, right? So in the context of the overall data, how does each plot look? So it'll be nice if on each plot, we could also have the complete data, but in a very subtle shade of gray so that it doesn't disturb our vision, okay? So what we are trying to do is this, right? So you see on each layer of the data, you're seeing the complete data being plotted on each layer. The full data is there on each layer, but the, uh, not each layer, I'm sorry, on each facet, but you also see the data of only that facet. Okay, so here you're seeing all the two-seater cars, but in the context of the entire data. Okay, how is that achieved? That is achieved in the following way. Uh, we are saying ggplot mpg aesthetic displacement highway geom point data equals transform mpg class equals null. Okay, that is we are saying for this layer, the data is going to be not the entire data set, not the whole MPG, but the data set MPG with the class column removed. Okay, so that is we are saying class equals null, right? So for this particular layer of geom point, the data does not have a column called class. We said class equals null. Okay, and then we said color is a, a certain shade of gray. And then you have the regular geom point. For this geom point, the data is coming from the ggplot setting, mpg. So this is going to plot all the points, but we are doing a facet wrap, okay? So what's going to happen is that this particular layer is going to get faceted, but this layer cannot get faceted because the faceting is based on the variable called class. And this layer simply doesn't even have that variable, okay? So that is why this particular layer of the gray points is not faceted, right? Because the variable based on which the facet is being done is not even present in the data for this geom, for this layer, okay? So that's, that's how you get this.
okay again i have shown it in a slightly different way here instead of using class equals null and the transform function which we have not looked at i'm saying okay let's just do it differently let's say that the data for this layer is data equals mpg comma minus 11 right the 11th column is the column called class i'm saying forget that column take it out of this layer okay so geom point uses the data mpg set but without the class column this geom point this geom point is using the complete mpg data set okay so you can see here there are two layers of points one layer using the complete data another layer using the data without a particular column and the column on which the faceting is being done okay this is a neat trick that you can bring to play uh, when you think when you really want to highlight differences okay so that's what i'm saying here since the data for the first layer that layer not 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 the whole thing for the just this first layer since the data for the first layer does not have a column called class we removed it facet wrap does not affect that layer okay and all of its points appear on all of the facets okay this this box should really not encompass this particular layer but it's doing that okay so that completes our discussion of uh, geoms we have broken it down into two or three parts and i think at this point you've got a very good grasp of how ggplot works what is the meaning of geom how does mapping work You've looked at all of these things. You're now in a good position to really ramp up your understanding of ggplot and to ramp up your ability to produce interesting graphics. Okay, but a couple of things you need to do. Uh, as of now, we are pretty much restricted to drawing graphs that the various geoms that we know so far can generate. Now, typically we would want to annotate the graphs and do other kinds of things and we look at those aspects later in the course.